Here we go. Spoiler alert, audience. Such a good show today. I'm very excited to come to work. Welcome, everybody. It's going to be a fun day. Thank you for being here. OK, let's get started. I was very excited to come to work today. I was really, every day, Every day I'm excited to come to work. Today I was really excited to come to work today. Uh, well, and one of the reasons I'm always excited to come to work is this woman. Please say hello to Kendall, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm great. I know. Great. It's, the crowd is ready to go. Um, excuse me, I'm pouring my water. It's I not apologize. Vodka. That's right. It's no, it's just not water. vodka. It's spring water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you doing well? Yeah, I am. I missed you today. I was over there and I didn't get to see you until like right now. Oh, I know. I know. She was filling in on the buzz. I know. We love each other. I know. And I was actually, I did the radio show from the radio station, which for people that don't know, it, people are always surprised by this. I am not in the radio station building doing Jason and Alexis in the morning. I actually do the radio show from here at Fox. And I never see Alexis and Dawn. Mm -hmm. We do not. I, why did I do this? Oh, J because it's <laughs> don't see him. Janet Jackson Day today. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, coming up a little bit later. Speaking of, uh, you know, speaking of the radio station, I'll say this for the end of the show. Uh, they released the the uh, premise for this year's Project Down and Dirty, which is the biggest charity event. It's the biggest charity event that the radio station does. I'll explain all of that a little bit later. But it was funny right before I came out here, Kendall. I, uh, we got a notification uh, from uh, the executive producer, Jeff, and she said, we have a, a special person in the audience. And, uh, and I said, oh, it's someone uh, celebrating a birthday. And uh, her name is Kylie. She's in the audience. She's, uh, you know, we got a little shot of her there. Now, he, now here's the deal. Is that you, Kylie? Hi, Kylie. Happy birthday. Let's get a <laughs> shot. There's Kylie right there. Hi, girl. OK, now here's the deal. Uh, uh, floor director Evan, can you come out of here, please? Uh, floor director Evan has something uh, for me. Now, this is what's so funny. Oh, uh, you cut your facial hair, Evan. You look very nice. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Excuse me while I look at the floor director. Anyway, so this is what's hysterical. We got an email a couple days ago from all of Kylie's very best friends saying, hey, hey, Kylie's coming to the Jason show, and we think it would be on her birthday, and we think it would be funny if. Can we put together a gift basket and deliver it to the show? And I said, we said, absolutely. So this this is a, a gift basket from Kylie's best friends, filled with all of Kylie's very favorite things. We got we have red wine. Oh, hey, girl. Mm -hmm. We have a dog chew. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, is she teething? I don't know. I mean, you know what I mean? Is Kylie teething? We don't judge. Uh, we don't judge. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Kylie likes to, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't. Whatever, yeah, okay. whatever floats Kylie's boat, you know what I mean? What it's, it's her canoe, not my circus, not my monkeys, you know? <laughs> we have a little, um, well, this speaks for itself. Okay, we have a eggplant. It's a dog toy. It's a dog toy, and then we have um, an edible G-string. I don't, I, I just, I don't. Girl, you got I, some friends. Right. <laughs> Ooh, as we say in the news business, there are more questions than answers. <laughs> yeah. So. Put it, put it away. Do you mind if I open this? Can I open this? Do you mind? No, I'm kidding. Jason, it's 10:04 in the morning. I want candy. Uh, okay, don't eat it in front of people right now. I shouldn't eat it. Stop it. Okay. No. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, happy birthday, <laughs> Kylie. Happy birthday, Evan. <laughs> Evan, uh, put the G string in my office. There we go. <laughs> I have 
never heard that no. ever in my life. Yeah. We're good. What? That's a, uh, show me lunch. Yeah. <laughs> We have a, seriously, we have a really good show. Do not turn the channel. As I say, they're just fighting on the view. Who wants to watch that at 10? Nobody. You know what I mean? Keep it here. I'm not kidding. Uh, we have a really special moment coming up in just a little bit. But right now, let's start with the hot dish. <laughs> First up, we're learning uh, about the early reaction to the new Judy Garland biopic, or as my friend Julia from Lori and Julia says, the biopic, uh, starring Renee Zellweger. Now, before we get to uh, that first screening uh, and what the reaction was, here's a little clip from the trailer from Judy. You need to take better care of yourself. You understand? Everybody has their troubles. And I've had mine. I just want what everybody wants. I just seem to have a harder time getting it. Do you take anything for depression? Four husbands. Didn't work. There's a man. I'm excited. Well, here's the deal. On Tuesday night, the audience at the Toronto International Film Festival gave the film a two-minute standing ovation. A Canadian, a Canadian journalist said it would have gone on longer, but Renee, who was on stage, came out at the end, told them to stop. Told them to stop, and she was crying. She told us she was crying, yeah. She was, stop it. She goes, y'all, and she, you know, she's from Texas. She has that nice little draw. Uh, the movie hits theaters on September 27th. I am really excited to see this. I, uh, I, I am, really. Aren't you? Oh my gosh, yeah. I want to, yeah. you know what I want though, so, so bad. I want to get red, sparkly high heels to wear. I know. Me too. Yeah. I we will should wear, wear, them wear them together. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah, wear them together. Yeah. Renee opened up uh, in a recent interview about the pitfalls of fame, saying, listen to the story. This makes me sad. This makes me sad. She says she was sitting next to some people on the subway in London when they started talking about her and questioning why she had so much plastic surgery. Now, Renee has denied that she ever has, and she said it served as a reminder to maintain a positive outlook. Yeah, I mean, she was sitting there, and these people are, were dishing about her. They were like, why would she do that to her face? Why would she, her face, they, she wrecked her own face. And can you imagine, and, and, and it's a good reminder, and especially for me, you know, when I do this show, and I try to be snarky just to entertain you, it is a really good reminder that these people are people, you know, mm -hmm. they, I mean, just because you're Renee Zellweger and you've won an Oscar and you're on, you know, you're on the silver screen, you still have feelings. And right. one negative comment can ruin your day. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's a good reminder. Yeah, it's, it yeah. sticks with you. I think that everyone knows that you can hear 20 positive things. And then the one negative person, for some reason, just keeps playing in your head. Yeah. But just because they're great actors and they're fantastic at what they do doesn't mean that they should be bullied by no, people. No, no. And it they're, and they're, means they're human, yeah. Right. The next in the dish, speaking of the Oscars, Adam Sandler uh, and the Oscars, you know, they don't normally... It's not a thing. ...go together. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. You know, Adam Sandler, Academy Awards. No. At the Toronto Film Festival, however, Adam's new movie, Uncut Gems, premiered, and it was universally praised and has folks, and I know thinking Adam could be in line for an Academy Award during his long, yeah. The 53-year-old has been nominated for 30 Razzies, uh, winning those nine times, but his movies have never really gotten any love from the Oscars. Now, in Uncut Gems, again, that's the name of it, he plays a gambling addict who owes a bunch of angry people a lot of money uh, that he just doesn't have. The Daily Beast called this performance his best since Punch Drunk Love. I love that. Oh, and I love Punch Drunk Love. Uh, the movie hits theaters in December. Hey, look, funny men, funny comedians have won Oscars before. I always think of the great Robin Williams. People discounted him as Mork for Mork and, and, and put him in a box of, of a, of a one-dimensional performer. He can only be Robin Williams. And then he does something like One Hour Photo, and he does something like The Great Goodwill Hunting, and he won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. So I know it's easy to make a joke, but Adam could do it. Adam right. could do it. He's fabulous. Yeah. He's yeah. fabulous. And, you know... I feel like sometimes the Oscars, all that, the Academy Awards, they can get a little too stuffy. Yeah, like, a little they, precious. They've been, I they've love been the word trying, precious. Yes, precious. A little precious. They've been trying to do that by, you know, I know they were trying to make up a new thing of like most watched videos and stuff. I, it just, they need to like, get down on our level. We like Adam Sandler. Yeah, we do. And Adam, let's be clear. I said he has one. 
Oscar, I don't think Adam was ever looking for an Oscar when he was making Billy Madison. I mean, no. you know what I mean? Just a he was good looking time. to entertain us, yeah. <laughs> also getting some Oscar chatter. Anybody Director Leo's favorite actress, Jennifer Lopez. That's right. Uh, for her role in the new movie Hustlers, which premiered this weekend, JLo plays a stripper who sets up a scam to support herself and other strippers who have fallen on hard times. Again, this isn't any, I mean, uh, JLo was in Selena, did a fantastic job. She's been in other movies. But I mean, she was great, you know. I love her rom coms. Stop it. I, I do too, but it's not going to win her an Oscar. Oh, okay. And I don't know why I pulled this out. But anyway, but yeah. It's your Oscar. But yeah. Yes. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. And I think that she's another one that's like people love her. If she's doing a good job. Well, like... everybody but Director Leo. But right. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Director Leo. By the way. By the way, if you missed the show yesterday, uh, shocking turn of events. Uh, we mentioned Jennifer Lopez, and Director Leo basically said she had no talent, and uh, said that, uh, that was it. No, His that's not what he said. Hit. Oh, she yeah, didn't know. No he didn't songs. know she had no. She didn't have any hit songs. Yes. Well, I know. Shocking. Well, I'm here to tell you, uh, Leo no longer works here. Yeah, no, I'm just saying no. No, I'm going to be teaching Leo. I, I'm not kidding. We're going to air here on the show. I'm going to sit down with Leo. And I'm gonna have a whiteboard, and we're gonna I'm gonna make Leo listen to all of, of J Lo's songs. Yeah. Good idea. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Like I said, everybody, we have such a good show. Go get another cup of water, cup of coffee, cup of whatever. I meet you back here in just a few minutes. Still to come on the Jason Show. Grab your tissues. One of the most emotional moments I've ever witnessed on our show. Wait until you see the surprise we have. For one Jason Show fan who absolutely loves Janet Jackson. And speaking of Janet, we're all part of her Rhythm Nation. With two days to go until Janet celebrates 30 years of her iconic album at Treasure Island, four of her backup dancers are in studio and they're going to try to teach me some moves. Each morning I wake up, I die a little. And she's our resident music diva. Aaron Schwab is performing live ahead of a big time women in music festival happening this weekend. Grab a mic and another cup of coffee. The Jason Show continues next. By the way, you look fantastic. Thank you. Thank Which you. I think is kind of a bad thing because most women do not look good when they get a facelift and then you look good and all, everyone looks at you and goes, oh, I should do that too because she looks great. But in most cases, it doesn't, does it? Um, do you know what it is? It's just that it's so popular now yeah. for men and women to get facelifts right. that there's, you know, very few really good surgeons and there's so many people wanting to have it done that you know odds are you're gonna get a dud yeah <laughs> is there a deal like you have the bandages on your face and then there's a reveal and you look at it and you're like oh you're nervous about no that's no. that's like in the movies oh really yeah. that's not how it really oh, works yeah you've got tubes coming out your head and these little ball bowls, rubber bowls that the blood goes into. Really? And you've got that for five days, so you look amazing. <laughs> you look really, really good, you know? And <laughs> Well, that makes me want to do it, yeah. Sharon Osbourne with Jimmy Kimmel. Would you get anything done? I mean, you're just stunningly beautiful, so you'll never need it. Thank but you. would you do... Thanks, audience. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Would you would you consider it like when you um, get to be I, 80, 90? I never say never about anything. Yeah. I've had a few friends who've had some work and they look great. I think you know, but I just don't think it's me. No, I don't. I don't know. Like my great grandma, she was 99, and that girl looked beautiful. And I'm like, if I can age like that, it's fine. Yeah. I don't think I. Yeah. I don't know though. I don't, I don't know. think I will. Yeah. Like, I'll do a little, like, I, I do a little Botox that's, up here. That, I should say, it's like what my friends have done, yeah. or like a little lips. Uh-huh. Yeah, I get I'm a little whale kidding. fat injected right here. That's right, yeah. It's a little whale fat. Just keeps the lines, yeah. Oh, no, I'm never getting my lips done. No, 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 no. I already had that. No. We no. saw, you know, what it could look like, and, and I think you look great how you are. No, I look yeah. like I got attacked by bees. So I'm uh -huh. good, yeah. More uh, late night, Kim Kardashian was on Fallon and played a game. I know, audience. I know, yeah. No, this is actually... Calm down, Phil. Uh, she played a game called Show Me Your Phone. Look at this. Sorry. 
Show us your last Google search. Do you know how to do that? I don't. You can't, you can't. You could have warned me so I could like. <laughs> you can't delete this. Clear search history. Kim, it's almost time. Okay. Show us okay. your phone. Oh my God, you guys, this is so <laughs> embarrassing. Come on. Oh my God, do I have to? No, come on, let's do it. Just do You're it. not gonna understand. No, I can do it, I can figure it out. Your, your phone is not locked. Is shapewear with pee hole better? <laughs> um, she was promoting her own shapewear line. I know, but I mean, I, I think it would be better if it had a pee hole. I know. I'm just saying. I mean, then you don't have to like readjust and undo because it's it's like a struggle when you put them back on. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, I don't. No, I, the, you know, I mean, we already we already don't act have like this that. Didn't happen. I mean, you know, I know. I've heard. I know my buddy Alexis from uh, uh, the radio show claims or says that this is a problem. For no, yeah. Women. I mean, but yes. every. I mean, yeah. anyone who's worn shapewear you, any kind, you can get stuck. Yeah. Oh, I've been stuck in male That's space before. That's what I'm before. talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got stuck in, I can't, we don't have time for the story, but I got stuck. <laughs> it's a great I got stuck, story, no, no, no. though. I got stuck in male Spanx that cover your chest, and the woman goes, uh, buy two sizes smaller. So I bought like, like, Sven Sungard size. I mean, you know what I mean? I bought, you know what I mean? I bought, I bought, I literally, literally, I bought Sven, because Sven is, you yeah. He's like, he's, he's built, yeah, he's and he's built. lean. Yeah. So I bought, uh, like, this big, and I went, <laughs> And I squeezed the, the shapewear on me, and I did it with my arms up, because you know, you put your arms up, yeah. and I couldn't get my arms down, and I was naked. Yeah. Yeah. And, wait. And I had to roll on the floor to roll out and? of And my neighbor walked in. Yes! And uh, <laughs> my neighbor walked in, and then I had rug burns on my back. <laughs> yeah. This is what I was getting to. Yeah. This is what I meant by this. I know, I know. It's, it was one of the low moments of my life. But today's show is going to be one of the high moments because <laughs> still ahead, Janet Jackson's longtime backup dancers are here. We're celebrating Rhythm Nation, people. But next, we're checking in with Dax Holt about the latest news out of Hollywood. Dax, Janet Jackson, a big surprise. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> Don't forget, if you missed our show live here at 10 a.m. on Fox 9, our replay is back 3 p.m. on Fox 9 Plus. And then we're always alive and well on YouTube. Search for Alive and Well. Why did I say that? But I don't know. Uh, search for Jason Show on YouTube. Well, our half hour hot dish continues with our insider to the stars. Live, live from his craft room, ladies and gentlemen, it's Dax Holt from Hollywood Pipeline. Good morning. Wait. It was kind of like an ominous little, ooh, I'm, I'm a little concerned. What's going on over there? Oh, nothing. Dax, uh, is that clock fixed yet? Uh, is, that's a fake <laughs> clock, though, right? It is a fake clock. I'm going to rip it down. All right, they, let's go. I'm going to oh! fix the time right now. OK, done, right, done. Yeah. Thank you, Dax. Right. That was concerning right, Minnesotans. Now, yeah. First up, <laughs> Daniel Craig on the set of the new James Bond movie. He looks a little roughed up. Oh, he looks totally roughed up, and it looks like it's going to be a great movie. Keep in mind, this is Daniel Craig's last James Bond movie. He announced his retirement from the series, so keep it. So enjoy this one. It's not happening again. So the 51-year-old actor was over in Italy filming the scenes. He's all bloody. He's banged up. Um, there was a stunt driver, however, doing a lot of the other scenes where he's cruising around on a motorcycle upstairs. So if you remember, a couple of months back he had to go under surgery because he had hurt his ankle during some of the stunt scenes filming this movie. So I think the producers and directors are like, oh, no, 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 we are not taking any risks anymore. Get a stunt guy out there to do the motorcycle scenes because we can't afford to uh, lose any more time with an injury. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, probably wise, I'm sure. Yeah, the insurance people were like, let's have a meeting. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, Miley Cyrus and her new love interest really aren't shying away from the PDA. Oh, no, they are embracing. I mean, what a, 
I'm sorry, but what a quick turnaround. It, you yeah. know, both of them basically in long-term relationships, and now they're dating each other. They're in New York. Um, but I think one thing to note is when uh, Caitlin Carter and Miley come walking out of the Greenwich Hotel, if you look closely, Caitlin's actually wearing a little ring on her ring finger with the letter M on it. So a lot of people talking about that right now. Um, and the other thing, they're holding hands, so it seems like all is going forward. However, again, I, I go back to it's interesting that all of this is happening as Miley is releasing a whole bunch of new music. Yeah. And it looks so, like a, a new uh, sunglasses line. Those are huge <laughs> sunglasses. <laughs> they are huge, but you know what? Miley doesn't shy, shy away from crazy fashion to get people talking, does she? No. The Miley's from the Abe Vigoda collection. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, fine. that's a reference 12% uh, of our audience gets. Anyway, finally, uh, Margot Robbie, what is she up to, Dax? Uh, so they are doing reshoots for whom her movie, Birds of Prey and the uh, Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. So she is back in her character as Harley Quinn, the makeup, the roller skates. And they are in downtown L.A. filming this roller skating scene, which looks crazy, where she's back, basically strapped to the back of a oh. motorcycle holding oh. a rope. And they shoot down the street. And uh, she is, don't worry, she's safe. She's home harnessed in and everything, but they are going very quickly down the street, um, and they did a bunch of takes of this. It, it looks like this is going to be a really great movie, and as I'm reading all the comments under the YouTube video, everyone's just like, I cannot wait, I cannot wait. So, uh, you know, listen, Margot Robbie's killing it right now. Harley Quinn, I think, is a character that everyone, yeah. you know, is excited to see back on the big screen. Absolutely. Dax, have a good weekend, my friend. Thank you so much. Follow Dax on Thank social you. media. Dax Holt, this is Dave. And then follow Hollywood Pipeline as well. Still ahead, everybody, we're introducing you to Janet Jackson's, and this is not over dramatic, her biggest fan in the history of planet Earth. And then Janet's backup dancers are in the house. What it's like to be on the road with Janet. These talented folks are coming up. Stay with us, everybody. Back in a moment. My friends, two days, two days and counting until Janet Jackson returns to what she calls her second home right here in Minnesota. She's celebrating 30 years since her iconic album Rhythm Nation was released. That's the third single from the album and one of my favorites, Escapade, recorded right here in Minneapolis. That's right. Minneapolis. Yeah. That's my favorite part of the song. Minneapolis. Anyway, well. There is one Jason Show fan who can't wait to see Janet perform on Saturday at Treasure Island Resort and Casino. That's right. Jace is a familiar face to many of you regular viewers. He is the guy who actually got a tattoo of our show logo on the back of his leg. Yeah, that's video of Jace right there. Yeah, we love Jace. Well, Jace is one of the biggest Janet Jackson fans in the world, and I mean that. And with the help of Janet's team, who have been spectacular, and our dear friends at Treasure Island, we decided to help make one of his dreams come true, a meet and greet with Janet herself. Now, I, re I visited Jace at his house yesterday. He thought we lied to him. We told him we just wanted to do an interview about his love for Miss Jackson. Look at this. Hi, I'm Jace, and welcome to my Janet Jackson Corner. Come on in. I've been working on it for a few years now. I have every single release that she has done on vinyl. I also have the reprinted versions. I have magazines, concert programs. I have a book that was given to me by Chad at Flip Phone. Thank you. And my Christopher Straw Bear. Um, it's one of a kind, the Australian release of The Velvet Rope. I have my different programs from her concerts. I also have this awesome poster that I love, that I have the same tattoo on my leg. This is my Janet tattoo. I had it done in one day. This is from the Velvet Rope. This is her design there. I also have, so those are my Janet tattoos. I love your Janet Jackson shrine. Thank you. Where is your Jason Matheson shrine? Oh. 
That's still in the process. We just moved here, so it should be somewhere over there, maybe. <laughs> How many Janet concerts have you been to? Um, I, this will be my sixth one. Your sixth one? Yes. What is it about her shows that you enjoy? It's gonna be the dancing. Yeah. It's gonna be her energy and her presence. And it's gonna be the Janet fans. Yeah. Um, when you're in a Janet concert, you're around other fans who love her just as much as you do. It's about just loving life and um, enjoying the moment and enjoying the moment that you're in and the people that are around you and um, just being happy. And that's what her music is to me. It's yeah. happy, you know? I've never asked you this question, why Janet? It's her smile and it's the energy that she has in her music. I can just put on her music and it makes me smile. I started listening to her when I was a kid. I fell in love with her and um, I kind of took a different path in life. Yeah. So I really couldn't focus on any music or anything, any interest. Um, so the past six years when I got into recovery, it re-sparked my love for Janet. And so I started listening to her music again more and more and it just, I just kind of got flooded again with the love for her music. Well. Now for the surprise. Now for the surprise. As I said, Jace just thought we were coming to his house to do an interview. So we decided to trick him with the news that he was going to be meeting his idol. We told him we had some promo lines for our show that we wanted him to read. And I said to him, read, as you read it for the first time, read it out loud so we could get audio levels. And he had no idea that the fourth card had a very special message to him. Look at this. The promos are kind of behind the scenes looking, so it's like me prepping you and then you reading it and Air kind of edits it together. Okay, so here's right. the first one. Hi, I'm Jace. You're watching season five of my favorite show, The Jason Show. Okay, so now just a regular shot there. Hi, I'm Jace. You're watching season five of my favorite show, The Jason Show. Perfect, okay, that one. Hi, I'm Jace. Yes, I have the tattoo of Jason Matheson on my leg. That's how much I love the Jason show. Don't miss season five. There we go. Uh, I like that one. Hi, I'm Jace. I love two things. Janet Jackson and Jason Matheson. Janet a little more, but Jason too. <laughs> I love that. I know. <laughs> and then finally. Hi, I'm Jace. I get to meet my idol Jason. <laughs> Oh my god. Finish <laughs> reading it. I get to meet my idol Janet Jackson on Saturday because Treasure Island has given me an exclusive meet and greet pass. Oh my god. We lied so to you. Surprise. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Oh. thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my god! <laughs> There's been so many things on my bucket list in sobriety, and like, this has like been one of the top things, and I'm like, someday I really want to meet Janet Jackson. And, and you and didn't I, think it was happening. I, no. This is, this is a dream come true right here. Oh my god! Thank you so much. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Love you so much. I love thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you make dreams come true. We did it, Eric. <laughs> we you. did it. <laughs> I feel like Oprah. I did it. I pulled off an Oprah now surprise. Oprah, show. Yeah. <laughs> Oprah, when she's here, yes. come to the Jason show. Yeah, I surprised <laughs> Jace. Now, Oprah, you can surprise <laughs> me. Please do. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jace, everybody. Come on down. Come down here. We got hey, you. You guys, you guys really got me. Now, all kidding aside, did you, did you think I was up to something? No, I actually was hoping. And um, my friend Scott, my partner, was like, don't get your hopes up too high, you know? Because Scott, like, let me tell you, Scott said, Scott thought, it thought I was going to pull up in my car with Janet. Yeah. In, in house. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping, I was like, maybe she'll come in behind you guys. But I was like, no, she's really busy. She's a mom and she's busy. She's private. And yeah. so just seeing her, just like having her see me up on like the screen would, would have been enough. Like yeah. she just having her know I'm alive. Yeah. Well, it's really cool. I got to tell you, <laughs> for all the reasons you just saw, and I, I, I waited to say this to, to Jace publicly. You're just the sweetest guy, and you've, you've, you really are, and you've supported us. 
You've Thank supported you. our show. You've taught me so many things. I mean, yeah. you've you've opened my eyes to things. Like when I make a joke, and sometimes you're like, Jace, that's not funny. Uh, you've taught me a lot of stuff, and you've opened my heart a little bit wider. So to be able to do this with the help of Treasure Island, Chad from Flip Phone, He's awesome. He's uh, they called and said, "Do you want to do this?" And I go, "Yes, we want to do this." Thank you, Chad. So you're thanks. A rock. So yeah. So thank you so much. So seriously, we're chatting. What? What? Yeah, we're chatting with Janet's backup dancers next. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. right. When we come back, back in a moment. Everybody, stay with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And who can forget the first time they saw Janet Jackson's video for Rhythm Nation? I know exactly where I was, Schaumburg, Illinois. The song came out exactly 30 years ago this month. Well, welcome back to the show, everybody. Janet's Rhythm Nation 1814 is the album that remains. This is crazy. The only album to have seven singles hit the top five. Did you guys know that? It's crazy. What you may not know is, is that Janet recorded that iconic album here in Minneapolis. As, she, as we mentioned, she's celebrating the anniversary with a concert Saturday night at Treasure Island Resort and Casino. And we are thrilled to continue our Janet Apalooza with Janet's backup dancers to the show. Give it up for Wiley, Laurel, Denzel, and Dominique, everybody. Thank you for being here. What is the one thing when people, I know it's the, the, the question everybody asks when they find out that you work, what's it like to work for Janet? I mean, but, well, not so much that, but what is the thing that people just don't know about Janet that fills your heart, that fills your creativity getting to work with her? Anyone can take it, any one of you. I think she's just cooler and more down to earth than everyone thinks she will be. Really? Yeah, she's actually the most chill person in the room. <laughs> yeah, and I, you forget. Y'all are laughing at that one, so yeah. No, yeah, she, and you forget that she's such an icon and such a huge person. and. It becomes so comfortable. That's my favorite. Yeah, Dominique, what's a great lesson that she's taught you? Um, she brings out the ultimate best in all of us and that literally anything that you want to do, you can do. She's um, inspired all of us to look past what it is that we're doing now and look at ourselves five to ten years from now and see what it is that we want to do and that what we're capable of doing. She sees in each and every one of us what it is that we'll go on to do further in our life. I love that. I love that. Denzel, what was it like? I always like to, to, to hear the moment, like when you get really good news or you get the job. What was it like the moment you found out you were working with Janet? Man. <laughs> I mean, I'm just... <laughs> it was crazy. It was really, really crazy. And it was, um, it was right after something, like I was going through something really bad. And then that news was so good. So it was like... I don't know, I guess you have to go through things and then right at the end of it, it's like, all right, let's go. Yeah, let's but go. That, that news was, was really, it was like a dream. Like, that's like the call you want and you work all this time for. So it was amazing. What does it feel like, Laura, I'll give you this one. What does it feel like, as I mentioned several times, and, and we, feel, um, we feel a connection with Janet because we know that she loves Minnesota and she thinks of this as a special place for her. What is it like for you to be doing the show back here in Minnesota with Janet? It's surreal. I can only yeah. imagine what she kind of feels. The, emo yeah. the emotions, what Minneapolis probably feels, like bringing it full circle back home. Um, it really was, a, I guess, a birthplace of something that paved the way for something that speaks volumes still to this day. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And to, to this day. To this, to this day. day. And, and just as important. Yeah. Just and and what I always say this with other performers, and one of the things uh, that I've said about Janet, because I remember seeing her at the state, and I'm sure Jace was there, uh, that uh, I love that Janet performs her hits. Because when I go to see Janet, I mean, I want to hear the new stuff too, but I, I love that she loves her hits. And correct me if I'm wrong, we are going to see the hits on Saturday at Treasure Island, right? Yeah, yeah. No doubt. For whatever reason.
Maurice, and let's go down the line before you try to teach me a step or two, because as I was telling the dancers, I am the only gay man that can't dance. So that's all right. <laughs> but let's go down the line quickly. For whatever reason, maybe it's a personal connection to a song, favorite song for you to perform. Oh. Um, I'm gonna say you. Um, we did it. We do it in the Metamorphosis show in Vegas, and it's the first time she's performed that in a long time, I think. And that song just hits, and the new choreography we have to it—it's so perfect and so classic already. It's my favorite. Uh, to me, it's something we did on the State of World Tour. It was when we ooh, mm. and it's a good, just good feeling song, yeah. and feeling to perform out the others also. Denzel, my favorite is All Night. It was just funky. Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like Last that. but not least, the lovely Dominic Hughes. Mine is all night as well. Uh, really? Really? <laughs> he reminds me of why I like I love to dance. Yeah. It just makes me like literally as soon as it starts, it's like boom, boom. <laughs> you, just, you just go. You just go. Okay. It's, it's just amazing. Well, let's go. Let's stand up. <laughs> He's like, well, let's go. <laughs> A little rhythm nation, so like a, a, a step or two, because I'm like an awkward a gecko. So, yeah. <laughs> so, think hand, hand, head, foot, foot. Okay, do that again. What is it? Hand, hand, head, foot, foot. Okay. Left, right, right. head, foot, foot. foot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to slide it out, out. Oh, out. Oh, oh. Yes. Slide it out. Okay. <laughs> Seven, eight. Okay, hand, so hand, 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 head. But, but. Leo, turn that music on. <laughs> oh. Five, six, hand, 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 hand. But, but. <laughs> Four steps. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't miss Janet Jackson's 30th anniversary celebration of Rhythm Nation Saturday night at the Treasure Island Amphitheater. Tickets are available through Ticketmaster. Our whole crew will be there. It's like a Jason Show tour, so it's gonna be great. Give it up one more time for our friends here. Thank you so much. Aaron Schwab is performing when we return. Back after this, everybody. Sincerely, thank you so much. Laurel, thank you. Denzel, thank you. Dominic, thank you so much. Our next guest is basically the Janet Jackson. Sorry. Calm down over here. It's basically, I mean, we're doing a show, Aaron. My bad. She's basically the Janet Jackson. I call her the, the, the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities. You can find her performing. You can find her performing at various venues around the area every week and performing here every weekday at 10. Uh, and this Sunday, she's performing at Crooners Women's Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for our family member, Aaron Schwab, and the great Lori Dockin, everybody. Hello, Lori. Hi, sweetheart. I've known Lori for a while. This is the first time on the show. I mean, what, what were you waiting for? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, I know. I can't believe it. Schwabarini, yeah. Schwabaruski, uh, tell the folks what the, the what, what exactly, I mean, festivals can be a myriad of things. What is this yeah. one? Um, crooners decided that they should feature local female artists for an entire event. Um, and yeah. there's, thank right? you, Crooners. Which makes sense because Crooners is a female owned uh, club, which is also very, very rare here in the Twin Cities to yeah. have that. And she is also a huge advocate for women in many, many, many ways all over the world. She all does the world, yeah. Yeah. philanthropic work. Uh, she's amazing. But um, this goes from three until 10. There are 12 shows mm -hmm. that you can go see in three different spaces at Crooners. There's an outdoor, there's the Dunsmore, and then the main room. Um, and there will be music happening on all of those stages from three until 10, all female-led groups. That doesn't mean there's not boys there, just yeah, letting yeah. you know. Right? I say, am I allowed? But all or, okay, the girls yeah, yeah. be in charge of what's happening. As so, they should yeah. be. 
And so it's really cool. There's, and I think I counted, I don't even know, over like 20 performers that were female yeah. too. Do you have someone on your card? Who, who's some I of do. the ones? I do. Joanne Parker, Katie Vernon, Jennifer Grimm, Maria Jetty, Ann Reed, Mary Jane Alm, Amy Lee, Katie Garrity, Leslie Ball, Lori Dock, and Debbie Duncan, Judy Vanessa. Did you say Rachel Lucille Hull. Ball? I did. Lucille Ball. Uh, Lucille Ball? Will be, be here. here. Oh, yeah. And me. I'm yeah. Well, you never know. You never and there's know. more than what I just said too. It's pretty amazing. I want you guys to sing, but really quick, speak about this woman right here. How long have you guys been together? <laughs> We have worked together, I bet, for over 25 years. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. what I think a lot of people now don't necessarily know is the reason that I do the things that I do in clubs is because Lori hired me for my very first gig. She is the person Lori. who, I mean, and really was the best mentor I could have had in that space, working in clubs and restaurants, um, and taught me about how it's not just important to be um, a female singer that is good, but it's also important to be kind to all the people that you work with. It's yeah. also important to support other female oh. artists. Yeah. Wait, no, wait, the Janet Jackson thing, and now this, I'm a wreck. I know, it's all right. <laughs> well, no, get yourself together, Lori, because I'm going to have you sing right now. What are we okay. singing, Schwabi? We're going to, I'm doing a show called The Broads of Broadway. That's okay. what I'm going to be doing. So we're going to do one of my favorite Broads of Broadway. This is Jennifer Holliday. A uh, Tony Award winning song oh. from the show Dream Girls. You We're used gonna to do this. You used to do this at Showtune Sunday. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Schwab, everybody, Woo! and Lori Dawkins. And I am telling you. This box of edible, um, this candy G-string says, uh, one size fits most. That is a lie, let me tell you. Kend Kendall, I saved you some, just in case you want some there a little bit Thank later. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow on the show, my annual trip to the North Oaks charity rummage sale. We're literally leaving right after this to do. I can't wait to discover I just uh, what we have. I want to thank our guest today, Jace, uh, for being such a good guy. I can't wait for him to meet. His idol, the Janet Jackson dancers, and of course, Aaron and Lori, who are going to sing us out. You ready? Yeah! Aaron Schwab and Lori Dockin, everybody! So, Lori's doing at the same time as me. She's out in the main room doing a show called I Am Woman with about 17,000 other women. I'm going to be in the back room. You ready? You all know this. It goes I am woman, hear me roar, and numbers too big to ignore. And I know. 